Welcome to the most incredible top 10s YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the top 10 best TV shows. So before starting this video, like this video and subscribe to most incredible top 10s YouTube channel for future updates. Despite the uncertainty and upheaval, many of us spent our free time cuddled up on our couches. Since TV was there for us during this lengthy limbo, it's only right that 2021 was a transformational year for the medium. With the debut of Discovery Plus and Paramount Plus this past winter, the second-gen streaming boom that began in 2019 has come to an end. There were so many overlapping titles that I dubbed it peak redundancy. In a market that never runs out of room for reality TV or documentaries, network sitcoms or any realistic written shows about the middle classes have recently failed. Number 10. You, Netflix. The idea is irresistible, and attractive, brooding, bookish romantic is a psycho killer. It was reasonable to ask what this enormously popular rom-com spoof had to say about the genre's creepiest cliches after Penn Badgley's pretentious predator Joe Goldberg added his apparent true love to the body pile at the end of season 1, rather than repeating itself. The show has found fresh targets for its gripping social drama. This year's third and greatest season relocated Joe and his insane wife, Victoria Padretti, to a posh California town to raise their son, satirizing everything from momfluencers to male bonding to swingers. Number 9. I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, Netflix. Cough and Flop, a reality TV show, Drunken Douchebag's Favorite Dinner is What Stakes. The pattern is so intricate, you idiot, says Dan Flashes, a men's boutique. Tim Robinson's ideas for this hilarious sketch comedy, which released its second season this year, are so outlandish that they tap into the social media zeitgeist. His characters, mainly males having fits for no reason, evoke the incoherent wrath that defines our era in a manner more serious programs never could. The episodes are roughly 15 minutes long and get better with repetition. Number 8. We Are Lady Parts, Peacock. Amina Anjanavasan, a shy microbiology PhD student, is recruited by a local punk band composed up exclusively of Muslim girls like herself. This irreverent, often hilarious, and really powerful comedy destroys stereotypes in just six half-hour episodes by authentically inhabiting its distinct London setting. Every character is unique and never seen on TV before. Number 7. Succession, HBO. On HBO's darkly humorous, Murdochian King Lear, a polarized nation's obsession with our billionaire elite became a breakout hit in its first two seasons. As the show's third season revealed this fall, it was only getting started. The Roy clan has descended into a civil war after patriarch Logan, Brian Cox, was publicly betrayed by his love-starved, try-hard son Kendall, Jeremy Strong. Whether Tom, Matthew McFadden, and Greg, Nicholas Braun, are practicing for prison or Shiv, Sarah Snook, and Roman, Kieran Culkin, are competing over a kiss from daddy. This season has heightened the stakes without abandoning Succession's cathartic joy. Number 6. Yellow Jackets, Showtime. Midway through a fascinating first season, this wild post-lost survival drama with Lord of the Flies overtones is still unpredictable. This creepy, 90s set coming-of-age narrative certainly isn't as enjoyable for everyone else as it is for me. A child of that decade raised on Yellow Jacket stars Christina Ricci, Juliette Lewis, and Melanie Linsky. Oops. My rules. While carefully piecing together what happened during the 19 months of varsity soccer team spent stranded in the wilderness after an aircraft crash, the show also carves out some of the most profound, bizarre, and different characters in recent memory. Number 5. Reservation Dogs, FX on Hulu. A terrific dramedy by and about indigenous people was sorely lacking on TV until Sterlin Harjo and Taika Waititi created Reservation Dogs, a group of friends who have lost a close friend hustle and saved to help him fulfill his ambition of moving to California. In the year's best new dramedy, it has a hazy, surreal meets DIY air that allows episodes to swing smoothly between crazy shenanigans, gallows comedy, and sincere emotion. This program is uncompromising and pioneering, with a cast of young actors who disappear into their parts and storylines that don't diminish indigenous culture or indigenous anger for non-native audiences. Number 4. Exterminate All the Brutes, HBO. 
In a great year for non-fiction TV, Raoul Peck's four-part essay, I Am Not Your Negro Up the Standard for Serious Art and Serious Political Engagement. Unlike many documentarians, he takes a global view of inequality, tracking capitalism, colonialism, white supremacy, and genocide. To illustrate how ideology can shape a life, he explores his childhood in Haiti and his sympathy with the ideas that affected him. Unexpected results are expected when a creative experiments as openly and fearlessly as Peck does here. Number 3. Work in Progress, Showtime. This semi-autobiographical Trombi depicts co-creator and star Abby McEnany as a middle-aged fat, queer dyke facing loneliness and suicidal thoughts. This story's representational load is heavy, McEnany wears it lightly, preferring empathy and candor above accuracy when dealing with sensitive issues like LGBTQ community tensions. Our heroine battles traumas that have tortured her since infancy in this year's follow-up to last year's first season, which saw her dating a younger trans man, Theo Germain, and meeting Julia Sweeney's androgynous Pat character from Saturday Night Live. Life up until college is told through flashbacks, then COVID. The show's rawness is appealing. What appears to be a downer is actually a mix of sensitivity, wonder, and uncomfortable comedy. Number 2. The White Lotus, HBO. This surprise success came about when HBO asked enlightened creator Mike White to create a series that could be shot in a single location for COVID safety considerations. His first wise choice was a luxury resort in Hawaii. Who wouldn't want to spend an entire TV season in paradise? And with a program that made rich people on vacation the avatars for a slew of contemporary social evils, White and his ensemble cast earned every second of their trip. The White Lotus is a combination of cringe comedy, wealth satire, and a vision of a malaise no amount of money can ease. From Jake Lacey's aggressive honeymooner persona harassing Bartlett's unraveling manager to the condescending dialogue between two hypocrite Marxist bad girls, the tensions that split guests and workers are delightfully scathingly captured on camera. Despite this, the program has more moral depth than a savage takedown like Succession, because to its empathy for all but his most depraved characters. Rather than diluting White's message, this option implicated viewers by suggesting these clowns and monsters were individuals like us. Number 1. The Underground Railroad, Amazon. How do you improve upon or even merely honor a work of art? So confronted Moonlight Oscar winner Barry Jenkins when adapting Colson Whitehead's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel The Underground Railroad for television. It's surprising how well Jenkins converted minimalist language into an immersive audiovisual and moral setting, without sacrificing any of Whitehead's subtle symbolism. Jenkins has always been a great director of performers, and may do. Aaron Pierre, Sheila Adam, Joel Edgerton, and Chase W. Dylan's performances as Edgerton's mysterious black boy deputy are among the best ever seen on TV. Mark Friedberg's production design and Nicholas Brittle's original score make each episode and setting a fully developed allegorical realm. The Underground Railroad would have been amazing in any year, but during a time when white supremacists besieged our nation's capital and government allies barred schools from even acknowledging racism in our history, it felt as vital as any work of art could be. There are incisive critiques of racialized violence embedded throughout this epic tale of freedom from slavery. The only solid defense against such destruction is an unstoppable urge to reach the light at the end of the tunnel. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.